I think he's gone. Okay. Well, I will say hello, everybody. I am Julia Sibley Jones. I'm the Director of Development for Upstate Fatherhood Coalition, and I'm so delighted to be with you. I've known about this uh, Ollie Lunch and Learn for a long time, and of course, I know Mary Lou for a long time, and I've been trying to connect those two to get us here because this is such a great organization that I have been with for about a year and a half. And um, I was born in Greenville. I uh, moved to Charlotte, moved back. Uh, then I went to college at the University of the South and, and Sewanee, Tennessee, and I uh, majored in philosophy. So my dad said, and you're going to do what? Um, and then I went to the University of South Carolina and did a master's in religious studies, which did not help him <laughs> decide what I would do. But I've been interested in nonprofit work and in making the world a better place from a deeply religious um, conviction for a long time. And so when I saw this organization, I thought, what, a, what an amazing thing to be talking about. And it must be like a new startup thing. But no, the, uh, the Upstate Fatherhood Coalition has been around for more than 20 years. And so part of my mission was that we need to raise awareness of this amazing organization, what we've already accomplished and what we can accomplish in the future with help from the community, including you. So I'm delighted to be able to join you today. Thanks for letting us be your guinea pig for the inaugural Zoom Lunch and Learn. We hope we don't, uh, we hope we don't kill it on the first try, but we'll see if it go forward. So now I am going to, Ralph, do you have anything you want to say before I jump into the PowerPoint? No, Julia. Okay. No we're going to, we are going to kind of tag team a little, so we'll figure it out. So I'm going to try to share my screen and we're going to start with a little video. So let me see if I can um, do... So, can y'all see that? You not, yeah. Okay, and then I'm gonna do this, see if this works. Yeah, okay, so. Okay, I gotta move my little thing so I can read it. So, our mission is to provide the means for fathers to become great dads, just that. Uh, we're the only fatherhood organization in the upstate. As Mary Lou said, we cover Spartanburg, Greenville, and Anderson. We have sites, we have offices there. We actually uh, cover the nine counties in the upstate. If you can get to us, we are welcome. We're uh, happy to have you at our um, sites. We also work with a collaborative organization, an umbrella that's in Columbia called the South Carolina Center for Fathers and Families. And so we're one of six regional organizations that work on this issue, which is really neat because it's scalable. So all of the statistics that I'll show, share with you in a little while uh, I can also kind of apples to apples across the state and show you what a real impact that we are having on fatherhood across the state. So this number at the bottom, 7,058, uh, mostly men, we work with women too, but mostly men serve since 2002. Um, but I think what we might do is start with this little video. So I hope that this will work. Let's see if I can do this and that and this. Julia, is the video running? Oh, yeah. Can you not hear it? No, no, it's frozen on my screen. I, can, I can't see it on my screen. I don't have it either. I don't have it either. Oh, well, I'm glad you said something about it. Um, uh, Jessica, <laughs> help on. I wonder if I can just get it. Um, if it's not through the... If they just do it on YouTube, but I think that is what I'm doing though. Um, what we're seeing is your PowerPoint. 
Okay, but you don't see the video? It's just, it's frozen on let's start with a video. So. Okay. Well, what if I. Perhaps try sharing screen again and see if it pulls up your selections of screens, okay. which might include, you know, if you've got the YouTube video up and then you can select that. Okay, let's see. Let me go here. I actually can't get back to my. Let me close that. Okay, so if I get out of here, I can't even get back to the. Do you still have my screen? Yes. Yes. So that's a beautiful picture for you to look at while I'm looking at the. Um, I'm wondering if there's possible just to go to that YouTube and. Oh, wait. Stop the share. Okay. So that was stopping the share. Let me just see if I can go to YouTube and find it. I apologize, y'all. I thought it would work with the. Um, I don't see any. Okay. No. Let's see now if I, if I do a full screen again. Let's see if I share the screen again and try to find just the YouTube. Can you hear that? Yes. We can. Um, video started. Um, I don't have audio. Yet. We can see, but audio, I'm not here. Um, is there some thing that I'm supposed to like? Share a computer sound. Let's see if that works. Smiling children. Did that work? Happy parents and times together. But the reality of family is something much more complex. In the real world, parents often don't stay together. The turbulent winds of modern life take their toll, and children sometimes get lost in the shuffle. You see, there's no such thing as a perfect family because there's no such thing as perfect people. We all make mistakes, but family isn't defined by the mistake. It's defined by how you overcome it. Becoming involved, improved, empowered. Building fathers to strengthen families. This is the Upstate Fatherhood Coalition. You only have to look at the statistics to see how children with absentee fathers struggle in virtually every facet of development. 71% of all high school dropouts come from fatherless homes, nine times the national average. 85% of all youths in prison come from fatherless homes, 20 times the national average. Children with a poor relationship with their fathers are 68% more likely to smoke, drink, or use drugs. Adolescent girls raised with involved fathers are significantly less likely to be sexually active than girls raised without involved fathers. Our mission at the Upstate Fatherhood Coalition is to increase the involvement of fathers in the lives of their child or children by assisting them with employment, help negotiate child support issues, provide opportunities for peer support, develop parenting and relationship building skills, and help create team parenting plans between unmarried mothers and fathers. I felt overwhelmed. I felt like I was going to drown and I didn't know where else to go or who else to go to. And uh, a gentleman that I knew by the name of Rico Booker um, 
I got in contact with him and he uh, brought me into the program through uh, the family court system and uh, went through the whole system, uh, went through the whole program, graduated. Uh, it's done nothing but um, enrich my life, I guess you could say, uh, from from a person that had zero education as far as how to be a good father. Uh, it really, really enriched my life a great deal. And while the Fatherhood Coalition was founded to support fathers, it has now expanded to include all parents, with the focus, as always, on the ultimate beneficiary, the children. At first, I wasn't sure what to expect. You know, the name says Upstate Fatherhood Coalition, so I wasn't sure what they could do for me as a mother, um, a non-custodial mother. That's kind of a rarity, especially in this area. And uh, I found that actually they had a lot of programs to help me. Their peer support group has been a lifesaver. It's so nice to speak with other parents and especially other mothers who are going through the same types of problems that I'm going through. Just to have that peer support on a weekly basis so that you know that you're not alone has been a, a lifesaver for me. Like in my situation when the mother goes off and have a life on her own, it's often easy to just say, you know what, don't worry about it. But they kept it in the fact that kids need both parents in their life. And um, I grew up in a double parent home. Both my parents were there. Um, and I never thought I would be in this situation. But now that I am in the situation, they help me out a lot with that as far as basically, even though she's not with me every day, I contact her, I, I talk to her, her, both her and her mother every day, you know, just, just to keep in contact because I want to be a part of her life every day. They really taught me to have patience, try to be patient with my youngest because she'll, she's a wild one. But they taught me a lot of patience with her and really, They've helped me a lot, a lot of ways, <laughs> but that's one of the biggest ones. And discipline and how to work with stuff, like when she's doing this, how to work with her. It's bettered my life from just the self-esteem point of view. I had, I had really gotten into a position where I thought I, maybe I didn't deserve to be in my children's life. And the Fatherhood Coalition has more than anything, I think, what they really do is let you know that each parent is important to the children, that they need both parents in their lives to live you know, as a whole person. They need what each parent can bring to them to develop the skills that they need to then become good parents and good citizens themselves. In the beginning, I was just a working father and I didn't have the time. I didn't take time to think about my kids. But what I did, I learned how through the Fatherhood Coalition to get down to the same level so you can understand and be able to talk to your kids and to plan for their future. The job training that I went through, they helped me get a job and, you know, just helped me how how to apply for a job and what to say and, and you know, just to get hired. And I was blessed by getting a job after I finished the boot camp job training. Me and my, my lady, we started through the Fatherhood Coalition learning about the Bible. We learned how to pray every morning together as a family. A lot of people don't realize when you're into the Bible and you and your, your spouse or your better half start reading the Bible and start praying together, you become as one. Because right now, these days and times, you don't need no Two, you need one because you have to work up under the, the same accord to make it. And, and you know, it, it just pulled us closer together as a family and as a unit. And you know, and that's the way I want to raise my kids. For her, it's having her father there um, financially, emotionally, spiritually, uh, in any way, shape, or form that she needs me to be in. And it has also helped my relationship with my ex wife, which obviously makes things so much easier on my daughter. They've helped me face a lot of fears that I've had before, and now my life has just been really complete. They've helped me go a, a long way, you know, just to have a relationship with my children and to spend more quality time with my children and to look at things different now. You know, you just 
really appreciate things in life, even the simplest things. I'm happy to say that I feel like I've done them some justice, and I know they've done me plenty of justice. So years from now, just I just feel like I'm a, be, I'm a better person now, and I'll be a better person then because of this program. And as far as my daughter's perspective, her dad will still be here in her life no matter what. And I, I, that's something I really borrow out of this program, just to be there no matter what, like by any means necessary, just try. They want me to have the skills and the tools that I need to be the best parent and best individual that I can be. Because when they are helping you as an individual, lifting you up, they are helping you be a better parent as well. These people here at this organization are here to help you. Uh, and being associated with them as long as I have, I can stand back and I can look at it and I can see that each person here uh, within this organization cares for every single person that comes in and out that door. I didn't think it was really gonna help me at first, but I went at it and they are just, absolutely changed my life absolutely um it made me become a better person a better mother better parent um and it just they just help you look at things that you've never looked at before so i would recommend it to anybody and everybody i really would go there to want it because that's the only way you're gonna get something out of it don't just be going to be going go there to want it because they're there they're behind you a hundred percent Whatever they say they'll do, they'll do. They'll help you get jobs. They'll show you how to go about getting jobs. And they'll show you how to be a more family orientated. They're awesome. Just give them a chance. There are no perfect parents, no perfect families. But there are people who are working every day to be the best that they can be. Building relationships, building better lives for our children. Because when families are strengthened, we all are strengthened. Okay, let me see if I can get out of this part and find my... Um, okay, that's good. And let's see if I can get back to um, my regular PowerPoint and do this. Uh, there. So uh, I will answer your probably your first question. I have it linked to the chat, but no, that was not Morgan Freeman who is uh, <laughs> doing the. I really wanted it to be when I first saw the thing because I really wanted to meet him, but no, he was not the narrator of that, unfortunately. Uh, but as you saw in the video, that there's some, here's the importance of father involvement. That when a father is involved, children tend to be happier, healthier, better educated. They earn more money over the course of their lifetime. They have a higher self-esteem, less likely to commit crime, overall more successful. And all of those things kind of spiral on one another. So you can either have a situation where you're you have you're better educated that will help you earn more money that will help you have higher self-esteem you see what i mean so it kind of ratchets up but the reverse is true as well and so that when when fathers are absent from the home and these statistics vary a little bit from what but 70 percent are more likely to drop out of school 71 percent are more likely to experience teen pregnancy boys and girls 80 percent are more likely to spend time in jail 63 are more likely to commit suicide so this is not to say that fathers are the only effect in this, but it's documented that the absence of a father has a huge effect. And as it also said in the video, we work on parenting and co-parenting because most of the time the folks that come to us are not in a married relationship anymore. And so what we're trying to help is for the benefit of the children to have a parenting plan that works for both parents that everyone can trust and agree on. So here's some of what we do. We have one-on-one -on -one intensive case management. So everybody that comes in has an intervention specialist. So there's a one-on-one -on -one involvement and we work on a one-man plan. What is it? What are your top two or three goals that you're looking to accomplish? Maybe that's find a job, maybe that's parenting skills, whatever that is. And then we have this whole six-month program 
that covers economic stability, um, employability, that's sort of a boot camp program, healthy relationships, because your relationships are also with the uh, extended family of the mother of your children, or also how are you on the job in relationships, because all of that carries through and you're modeling all of that to your children. Um, parenting and also a big component of men's health. So I kind of want to stop there, Ralph, if you're ready, because Ralph had been really involved in the men's health program um, and before becoming the director of finance and administration. So I wondered, Ralph, if you'd talk about that part. Okay. Well, um, I joined the Upstate Fatherhood Coalition as their project manager of uh, the HEAL program. The HEAL program uh, is healthy eating and healthy eating active living which was funded by the um, by Greenville Hospital System, which is now Prisma. And through that program, it is, in addition to the services we provided, um, it was our goal to make sure that every person, every, every individual that walked through our door was, um, was healthy or in a position to get uh, physicals, uh, medication, exercising, and uh, so forth. Um, and so we had, uh, near 800, um, 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 what we call it, um, health screenings. Um, you know, so many individuals, you know, needing glasses who were sitting in the back of class, then get their glasses. Uh, but we were contributing $1,400 per glasses or what have you to, um, what we, if, they, if they were needing bifocals or what have you. Some were way, way less than that, but that's on the higher end. But we were making sure that once we got an individual on his or her feet, that that person stayed on their feet um, by maintaining their health and their uh, mental uh, aspects. And so um, I know Dennis had asked the question, were we partnering with other organizations? Yes, in order to make it work, we had to get out there and, or we're having to get out there now and make sure that, um, you know, those individuals are taken care of uh, through other organizations long-term. We, uh, we, we initiated it, but uh, we want to make sure that those individuals had resources well, way beyond once they leave the, uh, the doors of the Upstate Fatherhood Coalition. And so uh, we we're excited with uh, that and we're still uh, partnering with that. We're one of the larger organizations um, that were funded largely by GHS and that's how I got my start. And so the, um, the men's health component is the staple component. Uh, it is important and uh, we wanted to make sure that no one was neglecting their health, which a lot of individuals do when they're going through a hardship. And so um, some of the discouraging things I've seen is that uh, someone going three or four years without their diabetic medication and uh, only learning later that that medication was maybe eight to ten dollars uh, per month. That's like, wow, um, you chose not to take your medication based on finance and, and not thinking that that eight dollars was uh, a financial burden you know on that uh, individual in addition to um you know child support and other responsibilities of that person so that person or those individuals in, uh, intentionally um decided not to take their medication to pay other bills um to water stay afloat and so julie you have the other slides to put up yeah yeah let's see if i get back to my there we are, I think. Is that where we are? So let me see if I can get back here. So these are the people that we've served last year in 2019. So again, this is the upstate. So there's three counties mainly. Um, 972 per participants, 56% were voluntary, meaning they came to us asking for our services. Um, our other uh, means into the program is through the family court system, and we have a really good relationship with family court judges because uh, I didn't realize this before starting at Upstate Fatherhood Coalition, but a lot of the men that come to us um, come because they're a failure to pay child support, and a lot of the reason is because they are unemployed or underemployed, um, and if you fail to pay your child support, um, we as a society have decided that you should go to jail for that. Um, but it turns out it's really hard to pay child support when you're in jail and it still accrues. And so you come out of jail having lost whatever job you might have had and probably not having transportation and an even bigger burden of child support arrears. And so what we've managed to do with family court judges is in essence uh, give them in a choice to be sentenced if they're going to be sentenced to jail or they could be sentenced to us for six months. 
And so that way we keep them out of jail. We help them with all the services that the video suggested of parenting and co-parenting, but also a lot on job training. Everything from let me help you work on your, what's your resume, doing a strengths and skill building. Are you good with your hands? Are you good with people? Do you have any certifications? What do you like doing? Um, all through interview process, uh, up to and including what does your ringtone sound like? You know, like what's your, what's your social media presence? If an employer looked at you on Facebook, what would he or she find? And then also all the way towards uh, providing them a suit or interview clothes uh, to helping them find that. So, so voluntary unemployed, 36% did not have a high school diploma or a GED, so we help people with that. 81% are non-custodial parents, meaning they're not the ones that have the children day to day, but they have an average of 2.2 children. And of the men and the parents in our program, the average age is 32 or 33, which is older probably than you thought. It was older than I thought they were too. Um, so let's see. So here's some of the outcomes that of the unemployed people that came in and completed the, our job readiness boot camp, 77% of those gained employment. If they stuck with us, uh, then we helped get them employed. The income, their income increased from $65 a month, which was sort of the average, to $879. Um, and that's a big difference. That can get your, that can get your diabetes medication. That can get you um, so that you can, it's, it's removing one of the barriers that is keeping you from being involved in the life of your child because you are paying child support or you're able to be there physically and it helps your self-esteem along the way. Um, and 33% 30 of everybody that came completed all of the components and graduated. So that's a full six months. So it costs about $2,500 for one person to go through the whole six month program. We don't charge anything for anybody. Um, so we do work a lot on getting community support and um, fundraising through various sources to try to do that so that there's, so that there's not additional financial burden let me see what we have here. So this hey, is Julia. Yeah, jump in. Can I interject? Yeah. Um, we save, the Upstate Fatherhood Coalition saves um, taxpayers, not only in Greenville, but throughout the state. Um, we save a lot of money because we do not pay the uh, child support for our participants. We put them in a position where they can pay that child support themselves. And so we contribute millions of dollars to the uh, local economy through um, them going back to work and paying their child support. And so, uh, yeah, I think I have that mind. on a slide upcoming, but that's exactly right. So, um, not only are we helping them do that, we're saving all of us taxpayers as well. Here's the child support outcomes the average child support order of uh, $354 a month, um, and the percentage of our participants who are paying child support increased from 33% who were paying when they came in to 67%, and 43% of uh, all completed all of the program components and graduated. And let's see if this is my, yeah, so here's what we're talking about. So of those 972 we served last year, that affected, positively impacted 2,130 children. So that's all of the children of the people that were involved in the, those participants. And because our participants are kind of getting better at life, it makes a difference in the life of their child too. Um, and this is partly what Ralph was talking about of the child support so those people, a lot of them who would have been in jail, not being able to pay child support and coming out more in debt, they were able to pay $473,308 in child support. And because they were not in jail, it saved taxpayers $2.8 million. That's just in the upstate. As I said, we could scale this um, across the state, and I think it's closer to $10 million saved. But this is just the, what we saved upstate uh, taxpayers because they came to us instead of us incarcerating them. Uh, let's see. So here's kind of how can you help. Um, so really, as I said, part of what I think our big job is we have a great program and we do amazing things and we can tell you stories of transformational change. And if you're more a numbers person, we can give you really great statistics. So part of our um, our task is to get in front of other groups like yours. So we would love to know if you could invite us to speak to another gathering of your company or a men's group or another church group, anything. Um, we would love to have you consider volunteering. We need people at all levels from being 
um, helping somebody with a resume to being on our board of directors and helping us uh, find other folks that need to be involved. Uh, definitely, you could receive our e-newsletter and know what's going on. Is your company hiring? Do you know of jobs that we could get uh, help people connect to? And then, of course, our funding is a uh, we're we're really looking to do multi-year approach. So we do we look for funding at all levels from individuals and corporate business grants, government, um, and your donations there. So um, I think Mary Lou, we could take some questions now. If you wanted to, I'll maybe stop sharing or screen my screen so I can see your faces too, if you wanted to, or just so we can see the questions. So I think Mary Lou, you're muted. Excuse me. Um, here's a question. How are you getting this program to the people who need the program? How do they learn about the program for the first time? Well, um, Mayor, we, um, we have a lot of community partners and we have established those partners over the last 20 years. Uh, a good base of our clientele is referred to us by the, uh, by the local Department of Social Services. Mm -hmm. And we do receive clients through um, the local court system, the family court. We're, we're in court every week to where we are in a position to intervene if we see fit that that individual qualifies for the uh, program and, uh, and is going to do the things that are required to keep um, him or her in the, in the program. Uh, we have other uh, community partners such as the Phoenix Center. Uh, individuals may be going through their ordeal and enrolled in the Phoenix Center and, and through their counseling um, may find out that, hey, uh, there are additional services out there that can get you from here to here. How about enrolling in the Upstate Fatherhood Coalition? And a lot of individuals do um, come to us through word of mouth. Um, we do have what we call an outreach coordinator. And with that outreach coordinator, he is pounding the pavement, uh, going to local businesses and uh, neighborhoods to make sure that the mission of the Upstate Fatherhood Coalition is heard by everyone, as, as many people as possible. And so on a large basis, we do have a network established with uh, our community partners. And um, but a good many of those individuals come through, uh, come to us through uh, DSS and Family Court. OK, thanks. Anything to add to that, Julia? No, I think that's right that we do. It's really a lot of word of mouth and a lot of it is people that have gone through it before and then they see their cousin and they say, you know what? I did this program and I think you should do it too. This would be, this would work for you too. Okay. For the number of people you serve that 972 adults in one year and 2,130 children affected, that's incredible. Um, of those, um, how many staff members are you, are there of you to spread within that many people? <laughs> I'll let my director of finance and administration. <laughs> we have uh, we have twenty five individuals uh, yeah. spread throughout um, spread throughout the um, upstate area, um, and again, like Julia said earlier, uh, we we have offices in Greenville, Spartanburg, and Anderson, but those offices also serve other counties, and and other individuals are referred to us through um, uh, other by other means. How about the school system? Do they ever refer um, individuals that might need better parenting uh, from schools? Yes, we have um, we have uh, one program that was funded by uh, the South Carolina C uh, Center for uh, Fathers and Families, and that that targeted our young population, um, mothers and fathers who. Um, became mothers and fathers you know, at, a, at an early age. And so we're serving that population and we'll continue serving those individuals um, as long as the funding is there to do so. But yes, we do receive a lot of referrals to say, hey, um, we, we are targeting those high school students. Um, this year may be a little bit difficult because of uh, COVID. So we may not be in the school districts, uh, schools as much as, as much as we can. So we're going to have other campaigns to make sure that young adults know that um, the, the, the responsibilities of being a father or a mother um, before he gets to that point for becoming a father or mother. We also do work with some young parents too and 
uh, they're having their, their first child. And so some of that program is about, hey, congratulations, this is an amazing new step that you're taking in life. So let us help you figure out how to be a good father and not derail your school. So let's wait to have another child until you're further on along the way. So supporting them where they are, definitely meeting them where they are, but also helping them not derail what's further along. And I will say that, um, you know, a lot of the fatherhood, uh, how, how do you be a good father? Some of it is you don't know what you don't know. So a lot of the men that come to us uh, didn't have active fathers in their own lives. And a lot of the mothers of their children did not have active fathers in their lives. And so you don't know what you don't know. And so for some of them, it's second, third, fourth generation. And so we are really in the business of breaking the cycle of a father absence. And yes, providing a, a lot of it is definite role models. Here's what it looks like. Here's the, some of what the peer support sessions are about. How do you have these conversations? How do you renegotiate this? How do you show your child that you love them without having to buy them a lot of presents or something? So we try to do parent-child activities and let's go fishing together. Maybe they've never gone fishing either. We have an event on Saturday that Ralph is uh, organizing that's a biking with dads. So we'll rent bikes for you and let's all go out and get on the swamp rabbit trail together. Um, so some of it is just modeling involvement. And I think I think it's an amazing program because it's also the, the father that you want for your children. But I think so many of the men are amazing because they are creating for their children the father that they always wished they had had. That's a, that's a really unbelievable thought, isn't it? Um, of the people that you help, um, um, and they are serving time with you instead of time in prison. How in the world did you get that accomplished? How, how did you, um, how did they give you that ability? It seems so right um, <laughs> to let it be that way. I don't know, and Ralph, that might be a question for you too about when it started. I know that, uh, that cause it, we've been around for actually more than 20 years and I think it was when we really started going and advocating for some of these guys that were in the program and going to court with them that the family court judges kept seeing us over and over. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Do you know, Ralph, of the genesis of that? This, this is an initiative. Uh, we started in, in this area uh, a little over 20 years ago. The, uh, the, the entire umbrella is funded through uh, and supported by the Sisters of Charity. And they have had this initiative for many years and, and, and fortunately was able to spread it to the state of South Carolina. And so, but to, to piggyback off what Julia was saying, it's definitely a, a need uh, when you look at um, the number of organizations that, that serve men, they are very few. You can probably look at the, the military or probably the, um, the prison system. And so, um, so the diversity of those programs are not there, and so if uh, you know on the on the on, on the other end, you may find if someone hits hardship, there's uh, assistance with food, housing, and so forth. But the public perception of a man, um, a father, you know, uh, uh, going through a hard time, we're supposed to suck it up and you know put put aside your PS, PST, you know, was that PST, uh, PTSD, PTSD uh, and so forth. Um, you're just supposed to, you know, or, or bear your emotions to where this program allows you to say, hey, we recognize what you may be going through. Uh, here's an opportunity to get it out in a non-judgmental uh, environment and, you know, get you to a point to where you are, you know, you know, quote unquote, healed. Hurt people hurt people. And so we want to get you to a point to where we break the cycle and you show your children that, hey, um, I didn't do it in my early, early years, but I'm doing it now. And here's some of the things that we can do to uh, make it better. But, but yes, the, the Sisters of Charity is one of our primary um, donors, uh, supporters of this, this initiative. Yeah, they started, they came, the Sisters of Charity, uh, you might know if you have Columbia Roots, came with Providence Hospital and some of those, and they are in Cleveland, Ohio, but they always, wherever they go, they're looking to, their, their issue is poverty. 
But instead of, I appreciate this about them a lot, being to have a career in nonprofit, uh, I appreciated that when they came in more than 20 years ago to South Carolina, they said, what does poverty look like here? Because it might not be the same as what we're dealing with in Ohio. And so they did a study and what they really saw was a niche that was missing in South Carolina was uh, the father absence. So that's where they kind of dug in. And from that helped create this um, statewide system. And to Ralph's point too about how do we help them and another question I see is like, how do you teach a father's role of responsibility? I think some of what's really important is in the economic boot camp that one of the first days is a looking at yourself in the mirror and really talking about what do you see? So some of it is about who am I and how did I get here? And some of that is about what of that was my choices? What of that was just the hand I was dealt? Uh, but how do I use where I am now and quit blaming everybody besides me or beating up on myself so much that I can't move forward? So we try to meet people where they are and then walk alongside them, not trying to fix it for them, but to empower them to make changes in their life that will help them be more involved in the lives of their children. So it's a definite taking stock of where you are. Is that where you want to be? How can we help you get to where you want to be? And what's the first step? Okay, and one final question. Do you have uh, a physical uh, classroom where these parents come for your training? Or uh, is it done online yes. now? <laughs> yes, until March. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so we've been doing it in kind of a hybrid way. For a while, as with everybody else, we were really shut down and we pivoted really quickly, actually. And thanks to a grant actually from Wells Fargo, we were able to upgrade a lot of our technology to try to do a lot of it online. And we were figuring it out as we went along. And so our peer group support sessions, everybody's, uh, the I think, um, Spartanburg does it when we have Facebook Live and we're trying to do it with Microsoft Teams and Greenville and Anderson and using go to meet like we're trying to use whatever is working for that population. Now we do have uh, small groups, not more than 10 in the um, building for the peer support sessions too, in part because a lot of our men don't have access to the technology they need on the receiving end. like we did pretty well to upgrade our technology to be able to get it out there but you have to be able to receive it. So that's still a barrier for sure. When we're not in COVID, another big part of our role is transportation. And we have somebody that will go get you from where you're staying, bring you back to the peer support session and take you home because transportation is such a huge barrier in Greenville County for sure, but Spartanburg and Anderson as well. So as we're kind of getting in and out of COVID, we're, we're figuring that out a little bit too, but yes, we do have physical locations. Very good, okay. Um, and for volunteers, what's the number one thing you need? Um, other than money, I'm sure that's one. <laughs> uh, um, I really think awareness is one of our big, I, as I said, I, I love this organization. We do such good work. We mm -hmm. are transforming lives and we have the statistics to back it up. So I really think if more people knew about it, we would have, uh, we would have more donations for one thing. We do, we are starting a program, a volunteer program. It's a little, it's a little tricky because we have to work with some um, privacy issues as well, but we do need people to help just uh, like mentor and be there with the resume help or people that we do mock interviews. And right now, honestly, we could do mock interviews over Zoom like this because that is how interviews are being done. And so mm -hmm. having some practice with that is helpful. Um, we could use uh, meals for our Thursday night peer group support. So if your church wanted to provide a meal one Thursday or every Thursday, <laughs> we could do that too. So meal prep, sometimes other volunteer for special um, activities. So, I, you know, I think there's a lot of ways depending on how, your level of how you want to be involved. We could definitely use people on some of our, I would love to, we're, we're right in the kind of middle of revamping our board a little bit. We're fleshing out a resource development committee, which is mine. So if you are interested in that, I would love to talk to you. Um, so it's kind of, we would like to meet you where you are with volunteering. Well, um, some of, some of the uh, things I have used volunteers for um, is that everyone has a talent um, and we have um, um, four 
categories of classes throughout the year, as Julia pointed out earlier, men's health, economic stability, uh, parenting, and healthy relationship. When, when it was time to teach um, the um, men's health component, what I did is that I reached out to individuals in the community who had to do, who had um, a background in, very, you know, in the health industry, and so I called, I called upon them and said, "Hey, can you teach our, our health component, you know, for this weekend?" And so we would send the PowerPoint and speaking points to that individual, um, and they came to the class prepared, you know, to give it a, a, a fresh, a fresh look, because you know, uh, our participants see us as staff, you know, every so often and in our meetings and it was someone else from the community. And so what I, like we reached out to one of the volunteers with the uh, aid upstate. And so although we had our um, component, uh, what it allowed us to do is to take our component, what we had to teach per our, uh, our, curriculum. Uh, our curriculum. And they added, you know, all this information over here from their organization or from their experience, uh, and they added that in there, and it, it was very, you know, in depth. Um, so, you know, say for instance, uh, we do look for some, you know, individuals to talk, you know, talk during our um, to present during our economic stability. Um, we also, as Julia pointed out earlier, you may have uh, be involved with other civic organizations and may be suffering from um, uh, suffering from um, participation. And so I said, hey, here's a perfect here's a perfect opportunity to bring your children and family out, uh, and we can use that as a parent child you know activity because one of the one of the main goals of the upstate fatherhood, which is uh, primary, you have to be engaged with your children not only uh, while you enroll but as you know at, when you when you graduate that you're going to continue that that engagement after leaving the upstate fatherhood coalition. So if you were to send us a flyer. Um, or send us an invite. Uh, there, there's a group of individuals who, who would love to take you up on those invitations and say, "Hey, they're having a carnival. October is coming up, and we know a lot of people have those fall festivals." And so, um, and your very your organization uh, in and of itself may have uh, paint classes or uh, or various classes. Then, and that may be something that we can partner on. And so, uh, just keep that keep that in mind. That'd be good. Okay. I guess one final um, request. Uh, can we have a link uh, to your organization for signing up for the newsletter? Absolutely. And actually, that should happen this week that we could go to the website and sign up. I'm not sure if it's there yet because I haven't checked and I'm not in charge of that. But I will check on that and I will send you a link to the, um, to the website when we have that up. Maybe I could just send that to you, Mary Lou, or to Jessica, and you could forward to your membership of here's how you can find. I would encourage you to go look at the Upstate Fatherhood website. It's upstatefathers.org. There's a lot of information about what we do and who we serve and some of the statistics. Um, and then at the bottom, there should be a sign up for our e-newsletter link to. That's perfect. Okay. Uh, and I think I've hit all the questions. If not, would somebody please pop up? <laughs> um, I think that was it. Uh, we really appreciate uh, you educating us on this. Uh, this is, uh, I know a lot of Ollie people got involved with the housing coalition through just such an outreach program as you're doing right now. So hopefully you'll get some wheels turning and we'll put the, those wheels uh, on the road for you. Um, thank you. Thank you Thank so much. You. Thank you all so much for letting us try out your first Zoom <laughs> lunch and learn. It was <laughs> well, definitely a learning opportunity. We started with a bang, I think. So, uh, and for the, the group, um, remember uh, you can go to Ollie uh, slash YouTube and get this program um, to send to others or recommend it to others. Um, and, um, I think that's it. That's it. Oh, if anybody's having any trouble with their, um, um, using your, inner, your Zoom, uh, please, uh, ask Jessica or Nancy. They'll guide you to the right people to help you with that. Thanks everybody for showing up for this and especially thanks to our two, two guests.